Hey guys, we're gonna go over common problems that I see uh, when dolphin pool cleaners come in for repair and how to prevent them. I would say there's probably not many, um, but it's good to know about them to be able to prevent them. Uh, and also common behaviors that'll help prolong the lifespan of your dolphin pool cleaner. So let's get into it. So really the root of most problems with dolphin pool cleaners um, results from two things. The biggest one being leaving it in the pool all the time, never taking it out. So the big, not it's not a big argument, but the argument out there is to leave it in or take it out. Now, the argument for leave it in is that they were made for the pool, they should be in the pool. Yes, that makes sense in like in a very simple way, but at the same time it's like it's not really made to withstand the chlorine all the time or a pH decreaser or any sort of acid that you put in the pool to balance your water chemistry. Um, so that's usually what um, happens when you leave it in the pool, especially with the shock, when you shock the pool. You run into issues where, as you can see in these photos, um, this isn't even a really bad case. This is what I've just, I've got in the shop right now. Um, how it fades everything out. And also you'll see this one is nice and shiny and it's smooth. Um, when it's left in the pool a lot, you'll get this almost flakiness on here uh, and it loses its shine. It becomes more rough uh, to the touch. And also um, you'll see, especially with the cord here, um, the difference in cord. So this is a brand new unit here um, on the top with the cord, a close up to the cord. This model is a model, I'm not too sure how old it is. Um, I, I believe it's out of warranty, uh, but this model has a cord that has been in the pool for a very, very long time. Ideally, your, your, your cord should never look too different from that. Yes, you'll probably get some fading, but you should never run into this like weird um, feel to it. Um, like it's kind of flaking away. Uh, that's that's exactly from the chlorine being left in too long. Um, so I would suggest take it out when you're not using it or at the very least take it out when you're going to shock the pool. So say you shock the pool Sunday night, take the cleaner out until Tuesday morning. Give it a day for that chlorine level to come back down. If you do that, single-handedly that, re that action right there will help prolong the life of the cleaner. I would say if you leave it in all the time, you'd be lucky to get anything past three years until you have to do a major repair like a motor, cable, or power supply. Well, not even power supply. Power supply is out of the water. So I would say motor or cable. Um, if you do take it out, um, I would say easily, easy five, five to seven years, if not longer, um, before you have to do anything major. So that's the biggest piece of advice I can offer is take it out. Um, another common issue I see a lot uh, in terms of on reviews, on forums and stuff like that is the tangling cord. So a lot of complaints about a tangling cord. Uh, here's even a more close up between the differences here. The tangling cord results from being in the pool too much. Uh, kind of think of like when you're in the water uh, for a long time and your fingers kind of get wrinkly. The same idea applies to this material here. It almost gets to the point where it's breaking down, it becomes stiff. Um, so if you don't keep it neat, like when you take it out, or if it's just in the pool all the time, it's going to get used to these, these tangling um, positions it's in. And being in the pool, it becomes more I guess, malleable, malleable, malleable. Um, so it's easier for it to tangle. Um, so um, two things that prevent the tangling is 
well, three things. Take it out when you're not using it. Um, the swivel on most models also helps. Um, and the, another big thing you can do is once in a while, like I would say like once every two weeks, even, even really, I mean, if you really want to be a perfectionist, do it whenever you're not, uh, when you, whenever you don't have the cleaner in the pool is, um, just make sure that it's in a safe area where water wouldn't get into it is take the blue cord, take the blue cord out of the power supply. So think of it like, um, and I've never had a really good way of explaining it, but think about it like um, if you're holding a piece of string or a rubber band and you keep twisting it over and over and over and over again, it kind of starts to twist up on itself. Um, it's the same idea with the power cable um, because one end of the power cable is always going to be locked into the pool cleaner. The other end is going to be locked into the power supply most of the time. So it builds up that pressure as if you were kind of twisting on something over and over and over again. So as long as you release that pressure once in a while by unplugging it from the power supply, um, that will help mitigate any tangling issues. Um, if you have a tangled cord now, what you can do is stretch it out into the sun um, fully and keep it taut, like have something not super heavy, but heavy enough to keep it like, um, have some pressure on it to be like completely straight and just let it bake in the sun. Um, that's the biggest piece of advice I would have in order to kind of get rid of it. If it's really bad, it's probably not going to fix that. But if you're just beginning to get into the point where it's starting to tangle, then that might solve your problem. So there's that. Um, and when you take it out of the pool, just just coil it up. If you've got a model with a caddy, you you know it's got that holder there for a reason to hold the cable. So that is the tangling cord. Next is check the impeller once a month. So in the instructions, it tells you to do this, but I feel like... Um, it's something that could be easily overlooked in the instructions. So uh, these two pictures are of an M600 on this side, and then this is an M400. Um, over time, and this will happen with any cleaner, uh, depending on the pool, um, really this, um, if you've got any people with long hair that swim in the pool, or even dogs, um, this is a um, clear result from that, because both of these have like their own little kind of hairballs on them. Um, I would say this one's not as bad. This one's bad. It's got all sorts of stuff in there. So uh, check the impeller often. Um, on, on both, it's very easy. As long this is where the um, I'm trying to get the pointer to come on. This is where the the basket sits. Um, there's usually a like a cover from so you can't see this from like a bird's eye view. But if you look from the back inward you'll be able to see if it's if it's got any debris in it. Uh, this one's very easy. There's just usually a vent here. So you could e easily see in the vent. Um, so check that because this will lead to like one of the common things where you, um, probably the most common um, issue we have is when, for example, I had two, two calls in one day. Oh, my pool cleaner moves for a couple seconds. It moves forward and then it stops. So what a dolphin does every time you turn it on is it does a self-check. So it's going to move forward, backwards, and then usually it's going to um, blow the fan for a little bit, a couple seconds, just to see, is there anything in my way? Um, is there anything blocking anything inside? Uh, if it passes that check, then it's going to go. If it doesn't, then it's going to stop because it doesn't want to burn itself out. Um, so usually... If it stops, it's usually always because the impeller is blocked. So you want to check that, obviously. Um, I had two people call me, both with the same complaint. And I was like, how dirty is your pool? Oh, my, dirt pool, my pool is spotless. I was like, okay. Well, can you check the impeller? Because the impeller might be blocked. And they're like, no, my pool's been clean. My pool's been clean. There's no way there's anything in there. It's like, I would just check... Um, if it's clear, then we can work on, you know, bringing it in and getting it repaired. 
And both of them checked, and they both had dogs that swam in the pool. So they both had, like, just hairballs wrapped around the the impeller. And the one guy was like, oh, there's an even, there's another dog in here. And I'm like, well, that, that, there, there, there's your problem. And both, both, as soon as they cleared it out, the cleaner worked. No problem. So that's one thing that not a lot of people know about is to check the impeller once in a while. I would say once a month. Um, it, it's so easy. Like you could literally, you just have to look inside the cleaner to, to see if there's anything there. Next issue, the topic of spring cleaning. Um, so spring cleaning, um, you won't run into this as long as you're, you've got your pool um, open all year round. So spring cleaning is a point of, um, I don't know what the word would be, but it's like a point of contention, I guess, um, if you should use your cleaner for spring cleaning or not. Um, so there's a couple different things I would suggest in terms of, of that um, is, yes, use it for spring cleaning, but after you get any bulky, like, um, junk out. So this is like the best picture I could find as an example. You don't want to throw a cleaner in with all this stuff in here. You Especially this, if cleaner was to go across, boom, gets all that stuff up in there. And then instantly it's full, but not even that. That's how you run into a clogged impeller pretty easily. If everything is going up there at once, the filter is not going to catch all of it. It's going to get into spaces where it can't or shouldn't be. Uh, so usually, as you can see in this photo, this guy's got a net. So I would spend, you know, 10 minutes of your time, get all this stuff out with a net, and then throw the cleaner in. Um, with spring cleaning, your cleaner might fill up more often. So, for example, if it only runs for 30 minutes, then stops, it's because it's full. Uh, we get a lot of calls where, oh, my cleaner's only running for 30 minutes. It's spring cleaning. I really need my pool clean. It's like, well, how dirty is your pool? And then they have to send the picture. Well, it's because it's full. Empty it out, clean it off, and put it back in. You're going to run into instances in spring cleaning where it's going to fill up. It's not going to complete a cycle before it stops because it's going to be full. So just keep that in mind. Um, I always tell people, um, really, this is spring cleaning if you throw it in something like this, you're going you're gonna to knock a couple um, months or even years off your lifespan of the cleaner just because the motor's working so much harder. Um, the cleaner's really made, designed to keep your pool clean. It's not designed to like do all this heavy duty cleaning. Cleaning, yes. Like once you get all this stuff out, it'll easily take care of all this like green stuff here and stuff like that. Even small debris, like I would say, down here is fine. But any of this, you want to get out. Um, so that's the topic of spring cleaning, I would say. Do a couple minutes. If you see any big piles of leaves, take it out with a net, then throw the cleaner in. And then just have that ex expectation that you're going to have to empty it out a couple more times until your pool is clean. And then power supply care. Um, the biggest thing here is just these three words. It's not waterproof. Um, it is, I believe, somewhat water resistant. Uh, but if the heavens open up one day and decide to pour down on this thing, I don't think it's going to be able to defend itself. Um, so usually what I tell people, and, and we do have some people come in with dead power supplies and it's like, did it sit in the rain? No, it never sat in the rain. Then you just shake it and you can hear the water like inside just rumbling about and it's like, there it is, water damage. So one thing is like, well, it's designed to be outside. It's designed, it's for a pool. It should be waterproof. Yes, but no, at the same time. I mean, that's not supposed to be in the, the, the power supply is not supposed to be in the pool. Um, so what I always suggest is if you have the caddy, you can get the cover for it, or you can also get a large Ziploc bag and cut two holes on the sides for each cable and then just make a makeshift um poncho for it so it keeps any like it, it'll still be like somewhat exposed but it still keeps a lot of the rain out um so that's the biggest thing um for the power supply in terms of power supply care 
Uh, you don't want to leave it in the in the um, sun too much either. It is better to have it in the shade. Um, I've had some some instances, not not common, where a power supply just gets really hot and then it runs into issues um, later on in its lifespan, if not that same day. So let's just go over this real quick. I would say take it out when you're not using it. That's the biggest thing. And then the tangling cord is really just a side effect of being in the pool too much, especially with high chlorine. Checking the impeller once a month. And then spring cleaning, really only do it whenever you get the big debris out. And then power supply, just don't have it in the water for, or don't leave it in the water, or don't leave it in the rain. Obviously, you don't want it in the water. So those are my suggestions. Uh, th those would be the three big, or five biggest things that I see. It's, it's pretty insane. And, and for example, these two, I've seen worse cases. For example, I've seen an S300 come back after the customer bought it in May and it came back in August and it w looked worse than this, like bleached out completely. So you don't want that. It's not supposed to happen. Ideally, you should never run into this issue where like the blue up here fades out like that because it shouldn't be in chlorine that's strong enough to do that. Maybe like after five years or so, um, but not within a couple months. No way, especially with the cable um, too. That's, it gets to the point where it starts to flake off and it's single-handedly from the chlorine. Because if it was in like a normal, you know, if you leave it in a tub, it's not going to do that. It's, it's the chemicals over time that eat away at things, eat away at the sealants and stuff like that. And that's what leads to motor issues, usually from water getting in or um, power cable failure. So as long as you're mindful of that and keep it out of the chlorine, you shouldn't run into most of these issues um, until, you know, you get a good life out of it. Um, I would say start to expect to repair things after seven years if you do really take care of it. Uh, you could easily get more. I've seen more. I've seen longer. Um, but just be mindful of all these things. I mean, that's the, the, those are the biggest things I've seen in my time repairing them. Um, so those are my biggest suggestions. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I will link the comparison chart for all the dolphin pool cleaners. And I also have breakdowns of like certain models versus other models. So you can check those out as well. All right. See you guys next time.